So good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Florian, and in contrast to my previous speaker, I'm a, a master student at ETH, and I'm partially here to give us give you um, a bit of my story here. Um, I was doing a chip at ETH, and the other part, I'm also a member of the Pulp team, and I want to use the remaining time to keep you a bit updated of our open source efforts. So I am myself um, from the beautiful country of Austria, which is right at the center of Europe. And probably our two most famous export products in Austria are Red Bull, which comes from Salzburg, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is probably known here. Um, but I am myself from Vienna, where I was doing my bachelor studies when I started to get interested in doing ASIC design. And I uh, digged a little bit on the internet and found out that it was rumored that an ETH, um, every student can do his or her own microchip. So I packed my things and I decided to move to uh, Zurich. Uh, and the Swiss are probably better known for their uh, precision watchmaking and uh, the delicious uh, Swiss chocolate. I recommend it. So was it possible for me to do my own microchip? And yes, indeed, uh, this is really possible there. Um, in fact, they were doing 10 to 20 microchips a year, even before I was born. And so right in the center of this slide, there is my very own chip. Uh, the chip is called Imperio. And Imperio is the, the first ever ASIC implementation of Pulpino, done in 65 nanometer CMOS. Pulpino, um, or Imperio in that case, is a complete microcontroller system uh, with support for the 32-bit instruction set, um, integer multiplication, and the compressed instruction. We wanted to be Imperio usable in uh, real-world scenarios, so we uh, included our um, FLL that we have developed at ETH. And this allows us to run Pulpino, or Imperio, the chip, up to 500 megahertz. And because we wanted to have this um, really working uh, in real-world scenarios, we also decided to include a lot of peripherals like GPOs, UART, I2C, and SPI. Um, and also, um, we included um, our own JTAG debug interface and put enough memory to run reasonable applications. Imperial can be operated from 0 0.9 up to 1.2 volt, and the dynamic power varies between, uh, depending on the load, between 14 and 71 microwatt per megahertz, um, or 3 to 15 microwatt per megahertz for operation at 0 0.9 volt. And leakage is around 150 microwatt, and the total area is, is 700 kilogate equivalent, which is approximately 2.8 million transistors. <clears throat> okay, so far was my story. Um, ah, sorry, but uh, the question now, does this chip work? And yes, indeed, the chip works. And why do I know? Because we have this um, awesome industrial tester. Um, this is the, the new kind of device you can see in the, in the front of the picture, which allows us to run the ASICs at different um, voltages, speeds, and I.O. timings. And we can also apply with this kind of oldish uh, looking device in the background, um, different temperatures and can run it uh, under various circumstances. Um, but the story doesn't stop here. Um, I've also developed my very own PCP, which you can see on the slides. It's Arduino compatible. Um, and it, the, the design is fully open source. I'm going to release everything, layout schematic, and so on. And I will also have a short demo slot, um, hopefully tonight. So be sure to check that out. Okay, now, so far this was my story about um, how it uh, came along with Pulpino or Imperio, um, but I'm still engaged in the Pulp team. Um, and I wanted to take the remaining time um, to talk a bit about Pulp, uh, Pulpino, and our open source efforts. So first of all, what is Pulp? Pulp stands for Parallel Ultra Low Power, and this is our research vehicle at ETH and uh, that aims at ultra low power um, computation for IoT devices. And at the foundation of Pulp, we needed a, a small risk uh, and efficient risk core. And we started out by using OpenRISC, but then quickly switched to Risk Five. And then people approached us and asked, um, can you share your work with us? But we don't need the whole Pulp system. It's kind of complex. Um, and so we decided to create a stripped down version of Pulp, um, which we named Pulpino. And now take me, um, let me take you through my favorite part in stripped down Pulp. So we don't need, uh, we don't have a need for many cores, multi-cores. We just wanted to have Pulpino one core. So let's get rid of all cores but one. With just one core, um, one can simplify the memory uh, architecture a bit. We don't have the need for this low latency interconnect anymore, but can directly connect the SRAMs to the core. The same idea basically applies to the instruction cache, uh, instruction cache and to the instruction bus. So let's just directly plug in the instruction RAM. 
and also make the data instruction RAM accessible via the bus. So <clears throat> what's left here is um, that uh, we don't want um, an L2 memory included uh, because we directly can access the, the RAMs anyway. And what is left here is the full Polpino system. In particular, we have the same, mm -hmm. the same peripherals available in Pulp as in Polpino. And we also have the, um, the debug interface we've developed and the SPI slave that allows us to preload the memories, read and write the registers of the core. OK, so this is Polpino. And in th this version, is currently open source. And because Polpino is based on our research on Pulp, we are always trying to keep it updated and um, contribute our latest um, innovation into Pulpino. So what is the current state of Pulpino? So we have this 32-bit um, RISC-V instruction set with support for integer compressed and multiplication instructions, but we also developed our own custom instruction tailored for DSP applications. In particular, we have hardware loops, post-incrementing load and stores, and various SIMD extensions. And we also released a patch for the RISC-V toolchain um, that, that allows the application developer to leverage our, um, our custom instructions. In particular, we have built-ins that um, allows them to use um, our SIMD extensions, and it automatically infers the hardware loops and post-incrementing load and stores. And if you happen to use our uh, custom instructions, you can gain an efficiency increase of up to 10 times for DSP-oriented extensions. What in particular I wanted to highlight is that we have support for all targets. So we have RTL simulation available. We have it available for FPGA mapping. We have also developed our own virtual platform in-house, which we're going to release next year. And obviously, if you have seen uh, on the last couple of slides, we're doing quite a lot of ASICs. So the core is silicon proven multiple times and has currently a core mark of 3.19 core mark per megahertz and 1.2 dry stone MIPS. <clears throat> but there's even more under the PULP umbrella. So we have these research grade chips, the PULP multi-core cluster. Then we have the standalone microcontroller, Pulpino, which uh, mainly focus of the, uh, on the ease of use. And then there's this third category, which aims at mixed signal applications. In particular, this is a PULP system um, with analog IPs um, that are tailored for <clears throat> signal um, acquisition and uh, processing in healthcare applications. So for example, ECG and EEG. The ultimate goal um, is to release everything, so the, uh, especially the, mul the multi-core cluster. But currently, um, because things were a bit easier for the release process, we started with Pulpino. So we open sourced Pulpino on the 1st of March and got quite fantastic media coverage. We had over 15,000 users um, that are visited our website and more than 600 unique clones on, um, <clears throat> on GitHub. And currently, as far as we know, over 20 companies and research institutes are using Pulpino for their work and for their research. And um, we are really like to continue this success. Um, so in 1st of March, we released Pulpino. Then in May, we released our tool chain, um, our modified tool chain, and also our DSP oriented extensions. And I'm happy to announce that we are going to share with you Pulpino version 2. So in particular, um, this will happen in the first quarter of 2017 and it will have support for very, very later simulation, IP exact description for all our uh, IPs. It will have uh, included our new peripherals and a new streamlined event unit, as well as a major rehaul on the software side. In particular, we're going to include our software developer kit, uh, which we also developed in-house, um, an updated compiler that uh, matches the core that we're going to release. And hopefully, we can also share improved documentation and tutorials. <clears throat> but we're still currently investigating some some other things. So we are looking into the privileged ISA. In particular, we have wanted to have kind of a secure Pulpino implementation uh, featuring a memory management unit. And the ultimate goal for this is to run the self operating system on top of it. The second thing is um, that we want to have um, a little RISC-V core. We really have a need for a very small and efficient RISC-V core, but we still want to have full support for the integer and compressed instruction set. And we are currently evaluating a one and three stage pipeline design. And the third point is that we are going to look into heterogeneous configurations. In particular, um, we want to have this um, kind of little uh, risk five with our currently released bigger risk five um, on the same on the same chip and kind of the same architecture. And hopefully we can we can use this um, opportunity to also share our floating point support and our various accelerators that we have been developing the last couple of months. 
So if this got you somehow interested, um, just approach us, um, uh, me and Eric. Eric uh, is a little bit more disguised, but I'm hopefully with this black shirt easily to see. Um, and just approach me if you have questions or anything you want to uh, form a partnership. We are looking into any kind of partnership and really happy to uh, get some feedback, bug fixes, um, whatsoever. And if you're shy and don't want to talk to me, you can also subscribe to our mailing list, um, which you can see here. Um, or check us out in the meantime on GitHub, Twitter, and um, you, obviously you can also visit our website. I'd like to, uh, to take the last words that this is obviously not a single person, person effort and not a single student person effort. There is a big team behind me uh, that was enabling that. And in particular, this is a joint project between ETH Zurich and um, the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering um, of University of Bologna, which happens to be the oldest university in Europe. Um, and check out our website. And um, if you have any questions, uh, I hopefully can answer them right now. Thanks. Christian Klingne uh, from Esperanto. Did you find out why it doesn't run below 900 millivolts? Uh, nine, uh, like, yeah. Um, probably uh, this is um, due to the state retention voltage of the, of the SRAMs. Um, the SRAM model we, we have are the generators, um, I would say, kind of crude, but it's free. So. Thank you. At least for me. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Michael Cow from Samsung. Um, Where? Samsung. Uh, no, but where are you? Oh, in the room. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm originally I, based in Cambridge. I came to your last uh, pulp, uh, presentation at ORSOC yeah. back in the University of Bologna. Um, one of the things uh, that you guys have done with um, Pulp and Pulpino that uh, some of the rocket cores don't have is external debug. And I think that's quite interesting for IoT applications. Uh, I, but I noticed that your external debug implementation is based on the, I think it's called the ADV. ADV debug sys that came from the open risk. Yeah. Um, are you planning on continuing to use that or are you going to move to the risk five external debug uh, standard when it's published? No, actually, um, we made a couple of changes to the uh, advanced debug unit um, in particular. Um, so first of all, we are staying with that um, to answer that. Um, but the other thing is that we made a couple of changes. So this debug unit had kind of two ports, one to go to the AXI interface to the bus and the, the other one that goes directly to, to the core. And what we, what we did is to um, have just scrapped the, the um, core uh, debug interface and have everything memory mapped. So we wrote kind of our own plug to our core that uh, maps the, the registers of the core to the um, AXI bus as well. And so this is the major real. And in particular, when I was developing that board, uh, it came uh, quite handy uh, that this kind of debug interface was already well established because then I just could basically preload the memories via JTAG and um, most of the software there were there, and um, there's even part support for the Open OCD project. So, um, as far as I know, um, we are staying with the with the debug interface. 